we have seen that all physical systems, all physical information processing systems add noise to the signal and therefore deteriorate the signal to noise ratio and limit the channel capacity of that uh, system. Uh, so it is important to know how we are going to model noise in electronic systems and this is what this uh, lecture is about. We have thermal noise in conductors uh, or whatever it is caused by the Brownian motion uh, of, of particles in the environment, molecules, and uh, it is uh, experimentally detected and explained uh, by first by Johnson and then by Nyquist in 1928. So we're really standing on some shoulders here. Here is a model that is commonly used. We model a, let's say, noisy conductor as a noise-free conductor and a noise source. And in this case, we have selected a current source in parallel with a conductance, the conductance of the conductor, and then the spectral density of this current source in amps squared per hertz is 4 kg, where g is the conductance of the conductor. An equivalent model, of course, is a Thevenin equivalent model, is that you model a resistor a noisy resistor as a noise-free one in series with its noise voltage source of which you model the spectral density which is then 4 ktr volt squared per hertz. If there is a current through a junction then let's say basically this current is there, there is thermal motion again and this thermal motion causes let's say uh, also variations in the current and this is the noise and this is shot noise so it is also associated with temperature of course basically if there is a junction and the temperature would be zero there would not be a current only due to the te uh, non-zero temperature there can be a current through a junction unless we speak of tunneling effects but we don't speak of tunneling effects in this course here so Noise associated with a, and here I, I depicted a diode, so a DC current through the diode IG, the junction current, and associated with this current, there is a spectral, a noise spectral density of 2 QIG in M squared per hertz. Now, the arrows and the plus and minus signs on the noise sources are meaningless. It is just a, let's say, I could call, I could call it, it's a, an attribute of my uh, drawing program that these errors are there and I could have omitted them. But if later on we are going to do operations with noise sources, it becomes important to assign a direction to the noise source and that's why I always put them in. So at this point, if there's just one noise source, it's just meaningless only in correlation becomes important. Excess noise is another type of noise, is noise due to uh, fluctuations in the conduction me mechanism. For example, you had it in, uh, in very old co uh, carbon resistors. They are made of a kind of powder and uh, there are more ways for electrons to conduct the current. And one jumps to one way and the next time jumps to another way. So that gives a little bit a variation in the conductance and um, there can only be a current if there is a non-zero voltage across the resistor. So it is clear that this uh, noise is associated with current through a, a conductor or resistor or a voltage across it. So in junctions we have it and in resistors we have it and usually it has a 1 over F spectral density character. There's a nice thing that you maybe are not aware of, but it is very important. Maybe you remember that you can calculate the power both in the spectral, in the, in the frequency domain as in the time domain, which means if you would let F go to zero, you would end up with an infinite power. But don't forget that this only holds for stationary systems. Only if a system is stationary, then there is a relation between power in the frequency domain and power in the time domain. 
And if you let the frequency go to zero, then the time goes to infinity and the system can never be stationary anymore. So in practice, there will also be a limit for measuring this, this noise. And theoretically, you cannot apply the integral going from zero. Uh, 